Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday, November the 7th. It's a significant day because it's the day after November the 6th. November the 6th, of course, was election day, midterm election, which is called the midterm. Now, I'm glad the other day when I did Jason Goodwin's program and I made it clear when I was asked what I, how I thought the election was going to go, I went out of my way. If you'll listen to it, you will hear me say it's my opinion. I'm glad I did tell you it was my opinion because it was my opinion and I felt like I felt like things would go well. So that shows you that my opinion, as with anybody's opinion, can be wrong. That's why I delineate and work as hard as I do to delineate between when I'm telling you something I know to be factual or I know where it comes from or if it's my opinion. Because my opinion truly is like yours or anybody else's. It's just my opinion. <clears throat> Things didn't go well in that election. Now I hear Hannity, I hear several people today I've heard that do a lot of fluff and they do a lot of spin trying to turn it around and talk about how great an election it really was. Folks, we don't get anywhere lying to ourselves. We don't. You know, I heard a piece of Rush Limbaugh today, and I was very proud of what he said. He doesn't need me to be proud of his work. He's brilliant on his own. But I did, I was proud of what he said because he came closer to telling the truth than any of the others that I've heard explaining what happened. It wasn't a good day for us. The American people. It wasn't a good day. Why? Well, let's count the reasons. <clears throat> Number one, the Democrats now have control of the House, the United States House of Representatives. And in that position, they are in place to block anything President Trump tries to do, anything he tries to do. They now have a blocking position to shut it down. You say, but they didn't win the Senate. The Senate, actually, Republicans took gain seats in the Senate, yes. But in most legislation, in all legislation, You've got to have both houses approve it, then the president approve it, and they all sign it, and then it becomes a law. Well, the House is now run by Democrats. And the Democrats are the ones that started this whole process that's used now by both parties of using the technical rules to shut stuff down that they don't want to happen. Very seldom today, if you think about it, do things get voted down, up, in, or out. You don't see that a lot anymore. What happens today when something comes up? Somebody in one of the parties, in the leadership of one of the parties, they'll come in and pull some kind of parliamentary trick and stop it that way, block it that way. It never comes to a vote. Well, that power now is in the hands of the Democrats. Another reason it's bad for them to have control. I know towards the end of the election cycle, they were telling their people to back off of talking and teaching Trump. I know they were. 
But the minute they're sworn in in January, I don't know who it will be. I think it's shift, Adam shift. Somebody's going to play, replace Nunes heading up that committee, that investigative committee. And they're going to work feverishly day in, day out, every day, trying to set it up to, to impeach Trump, to impeach him. Now, you might say, yeah, but if they do impeach him in the House, we gain seats in the Senate. So therefore, when it gets to the Senate, for that trial, the Republicans have control of it, so he he won't have to worry. Guys, let me tell you. If any of you saw Mitch McConnell's press conference today, I saw most of it, I guess. But if you saw his press conference today, Mitch McConnell, I bet you noticed, if you got eyes and if you got ears, I bet you notice that he did everything he could do to just barely mention President Trump. He gave him just a thank you, just as short a thank you as he could get by with. But it was obvious he did not want to praise President Trump. He didn't. And he did not praise him. Simple thank you, but it was certainly not heartfelt. The con don't like Trump. Half or better of the Republicans in the Senate don't like Trump. And if it's ever brought before them in an impeachment trial, to impeach President Trump, look out. The Senate is not safe. It is not safe for President Trump. They will go along with impeachment. They will. Now, my hope is that some of the new blood that got in this election I'm not sure where they stand yet, but I'm hoping that some of the newbies that got elected yesterday will be supportive of President Trump. I hope they are. But you see, the list goes on and on and on of what's going to happen. It's all going to change. It's all going to change now. You've already heard, I'm sure, that Jeff Sessions is gone. Now, that's not totally a bad thing, and it's not a total surprise, and it's not, uh, as will be portrayed, I'm sure, <clears throat> you know, some dispute between Trump and Sessions. Not at all. When you work for the White House, when you're in an administration at the level of just sessions, at the level of you know, all of the people that you see, Senator Huckabee Sanders, all of them, that job is 24-7. It never stops. It never ends. And it wears you out. Out. Jeff Sessions, the need, the frustration anymore. Jeff Sessions has no reason to take the verbal abuse that he's having to take from millions of Americans when all in the world he's trying to do is bring our Justice Department, bring our law, our legal system back under the Constitution. That's all he's tried to do. He hadn't been a part of some vast conspiracy to whatever. He's just tried and is trying and will continue to try. 
to get our legal system back where it was supposed to be, back under the Constitution. Under the Constitution. I'll give four words. Under the Constitution. See, that's another problem we have with the Democrats doing what they did election night in the House. When they're around, everything we do moves us further away from the original intent of our founding fathers in our Constitution. Every day we get pulled further away. It's sad. Sometimes it's like saying bye to an old friend that's dying. It's sad. The Constitution. The United States of America Constitution. And it's being overlooked. It's being trashed. And according to the progressives, it's being outdated. It's outdated. It needs to be replaced with something new, fresh. You know, some things I agree are better when they are modernized. Some things are better when they are brought current in some way or another. But some things are perfect just the way they are. One such instrument, I would say, would be the Bible. The Bible. It won't be long. Probably has already started since I'm just not into the religion stuff that much. I'm talking about all the stuff that goes on. It may already be happening, but it wouldn't surprise me to wake up and see some of the leaders in the church business rewriting the Bible. Saying it's not current. The Bible needs to teach more about homosexuality. The Bible needs to teach more about computerization. It wouldn't surprise me a bit. That our Constitution. Constitution is the foundational principles to which this nation was created. It don't need changing. Especially when you understand that they're wanting to change it, not for the purposes they're telling you. They will tell us that they want to change the Constitution, that form, to give us something more contemporary, something more modern day, something that takes into account the internet, something that takes into account cell phones and et cetera, et cetera. That's what they'll tell us has got to be done. That's not what they're trying to do. That's not at all what they're going to do. What they are doing is they're trying to take our form of government, the representative form of government, They want to take it away from us and replace it with a pseudo, what would you call it, this socialist type regime. And the reason they fight so hard for those jobs in Washington 
those congressional jobs, those Senate jobs, which, you know, if you just do the math yourself, you've got a man goes to Washington as a congressman, and if you look at his balance sheet, he's worth maybe, let's give him a lot of money, let's say he's worth a million dollars, fine. He's there 10 years, he's there 10 years, making 170000 a year, and somehow at the end of 10 years, now this guy's worth a hundred million. Where did it come from? I know, you you know, we'll talk about it on another problem, but it's insider trade, legal insider trading because they're congressmen and they're senators. And it's a money thing. They make a lot of money. That's why they want it so bad, but that's not the big reason they want it. Money's important, but it ain't the big one. No, sir. Now, another thing that they want is the perks. Let me assure you, when you go to Washington, if you're a congressman or a senator, newbie, first time you go, you're going to be met by somebody like me. He's going to take you through orientation and acclimation, teach you where the bathrooms are and where the different committee rooms are, etc., and how this, that, and the other works. But that's what it's supposed to be, but what it actually is. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where you are taught and trained real fast. And if you want to keep that job, you got to dance to the special interest. They'll pay you to do it. But then there's one other thing that they've got. Temptation. Temptation. What is your fetish? And I don't mean, oh, playing cards. I don't mean playing pinochle. I don't mean dominoes. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about what's your fetish. You want women, boys, girls, drugs. What is it? It's whatever you want. You're in Candyland. Candyman. And it don't take long to see them fall, folks, and I've watched them fall, many of them. Many, many, many. I've watched them go there straight, clean as an air, or clean as an air and straight, but then give them six months up there, and you don't even know it's the same person. It's all going to change. For the people that are out there saying that this was a mandate for the Democrats saying that they really, the, the general public, that the people really love their position on health care, that that's a lie. Then I tell you that it's because people hate Trump. That's a lie. It's not true. What happened yesterday is simple. It's so simple I even told you before it happened that it could happen. Didn't I? Did I not tell y'all how small groups, you know, just a small group of people, you match them with another small group and this group and that group. How and in a midterm election, voter turnout's generally so low that any movement of a group is significant. Well, you saw it yesterday. Yesterday you saw that. It wasn't magic. That's what happened. The Democrats went out and they got the Mexicans 
that they could get to vote. They got them to vote. They went out. They got the millennials that they could get to vote to go out and vote. They got prisoners to go out and vote. They went out and got all of these small groups that they could find and got them to vote together, which in a general election, when the president's running, there wouldn't be enough votes there to matter. But in a midterm election, it skews the election results. Well, there you can't be right about that. Well, folks, figure it out for yourself. Don't believe me. Get out the results of the election. I haven't done it. You do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't need to do it. You need to. Get out the election results. What you should find that should be intriguing to you, look at the margins of victory. Look at them. And yeah, there's going to be some, very few, that have big margins of victory. But most are going to be pretty dang tight. Look it up. Look for yourself. That is the proof. When you see a small, very small margin of victory throughout many different races, what you're seeing is the effect of a small group. Things are going to be different. President Trump's going to have to be different. I don't like it, but he's going to have to be. He's going to have to change the makeup of his cabinet. That's part of why Sessions is leaving. That's why there will be more leaving here very soon. He's got to change the makeup of his administration for at least the next two years. He's got to have a cabinet that allows him to be able to at least try, try to get along with the Democrats in Congress. At least try. But he, I know for a fact, does not believe he's going to be able to get that kind of relationship no matter what he does. And I have to agree. I'm going to leave you with one other thing before I go. There's going to be talk about did Trump help, did he not help. Folks, let me tell you something. Had President Trump not taken the bull by the horns the way he did, had he not have gone out to these states and stuff that he went to, had he not have done that, the Republicans would have been massacred. We're talking 40 to 60 range of losses. Do you hear me? 40 to 60. There's no doubt that being close, staying in, not losing any more than they did, and gaining miraculously what they did in the Senate, that is an incredible feat that was conducted and carried out by President Trump. And I'll tell you that some of the congressional candidates that lost, let me tell you, they put up crap campaigns. President Trump didn't control their campaign. He didn't. President Trump will need our support now more than ever. He will. And we've got to be there for him. And we've got to hope that in the next two years that the damage can be held to some form of a middle, you know, a minimum, somehow. 
When I was in school, I think it was high school, I learned the word. I don't know why I learned it, because I was not a studious student. I was interested in sports, and studying stuff just wasn't my, wasn't my racket. But for some reason, after all these years, there was one word that stuck in my head, and it was called an anachronism. Anachronism. Look it up. It's really in the dictionary. Here it was. Anachronism. Now, if you look it up in the dictionary, it's going to have a def definition similar to this, which is it's an item or a thing or whatever that's out of its place in time. So it would be like you watching a play of Romeo and Juliet, and then one of the leading characters has a Rolex digital watch on that they forgot to take off. That watch is out of its place in time. I hope you all understand that. Well, I feel like an anachronism. I feel like I am out of my place in time. I feel like there's something wrong with me. I feel like I can see, I can touch, I, I can... I understand our country the way it was meant to be. I understand what we're supposed to be, what we tried to be. I understand all of that. But it's like that don't fit no more. That don't fit no more. You know, today limbo. God, I never thought I'd hear anybody say this out loud on the radio, but limbo did. He said the millennials come out and he said they think they know everything. Limbaugh did. He said the millennials think they know everything. They think they're so smart. And they fell out of my chair because that's the truth. It's the truth. I mean, nobody wants to say it out loud because you don't want to make the millennials mad. Why? Because the millennials are our kids and our grandkids. But they do, they put all this stock, all of this value in that damn computer. The computer, hey, computer gives you information. I do not doubt that. They can punch buttons and get more information than I can ever get. But that computer don't give you wisdom and it don't give you discernment. They don't have either of those. That means we got to have it. We got to watch for it. Well, guys, I'm taking too much of your time. But I wanted to talk to you as soon as I could after the election. And I want you all to know How proud I am of y'all. Y'all stayed the course. We got more to do. It's going to be different. Some ways it's going to be harder. And actually in some ways it's going to be easier. But to all the people that tell you don't worry, now the people are going to see the Democrats for what they really are. No, they won't. You know why? Because the media is not going to tell the public what they do wrong. The Democrats have a license to steal. They can do whatever they want to do during this two-year period. They can do whatever they want. They can make every mistake in the book. The mainstream media is not going to publish it or put it out. People will never find out about any of it. So, with that... Best I can say to you, get up in the morning, suit up, and we all get back in the game. 
with that, thank you. Good night.